Hi and welcome back to Crumpled Underfoot. This is the second video under the series Staad Basics. If you happen to miss the first one, you can find it in the link below. In this video, we will start on doing some modeling basics. So those of you who are already itching to work your hands, I know, just hold on for quite a bit. To begin, I will say that our objective in this video is for you to get acquainted with some important geometric commands. And at the end of the video, you should be able to make a model of simple 3D frame. Say, a regular building structure. So today, I will introduce you to four simple but very useful commands in STAD that could be found under the Geometry and Tools command. This is an example which I would like to show you. It's a regular frame, but the dimensions unfortunately are not included. Let's just say we'll be working on a 6x6 six six panel, square panels. And then I'm opting to go for option B. So from our blank workspace, one way to start is to define some of the nodes within a specific level or elevation of your structure. To do that, it is a lot easier to switch to plan or top view. That is the positive Y. Now, this is just one way of doing it. I mean, you might be able to have a better idea as you watch this video. Now what I would want to do, of course, is to plot some of the nodes which I think I need. Now I plotted three nodes, which I think I'll need. I'll do the rest by using the first of our subject commands to do the rest. And that is the repeat command under the geometry tab. You will find that there are two repeat commands in here, the translational and circular. Since our example structure does not contain any curve or circular shapes, Translational repeat is the one useful for our purposes. After I completed all the necessary nodes, I'm ready to start with defining the members, that is, the beams on this specific level. The next important command here is the connect beams along, also found under the geometry tab. This command enables you to connect your nodes which are perfectly aligned with the global X, Y, and Z. Hence, if for some reasons, your nodes are skewed or less of a perfect alignment, then you won't be able to use this command. For that case, you have to connect them using the add beam button. So I'll go ahead and set my primary or my main beams. Notice the stat prompts you a message which says how exactly how many beams are connected.
Once my main beams are set, the next thing to do is to define the secondary beams or joists. For this, we could either use the repeat command to duplicate the nodes where the secondary beam connects or simply use the split beam command under the geometry tab. Here you can use the split beam or the repeat, but if you will be using the repeat command, we have to select the nodes we're going to repeat or to duplicate. For this one, I just choose split beam. I'll use the add points, I will be adding two additional points since we have two secondary beams for each primary beam in the x-direction. There you go. Again, we use the connect beams along C. After defining the secondary beams, the next thing to do is to assign certain specifications for them such as the release command. This is to ensure that the secondary beams will not transfer moments to the primary beams. Now our floor framing is complete. Say that we are dealing with a typical floor plan and then what's left for us to do is to use the repeat command to set all the remaining floor levels. As for this example, I will presume that we have a 5 story building as a roof deck with a typical floor heights of 3.5 meters. Notice earlier, I specified the Y coordinate to be at 3.5 this because of that reason. So I'll just go ahead and then duplicate the levels. Now we are almost done with our structure geometry and the last thing to do here is to define the level of our foundation and to assign some supports. Before that, we need to create our columns along the Y axis. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and set my view to the top and then I'll simply connect joints contain our columns.
notice that this level, this one, is at positive 3.5 along the y-axis, which implies that I earlier decided to have my ground level at level 0. Now let's say I would define the foundation level at negative 2. So what I would like to do is to take these columns and I'll isolate them. This allows me to locate the position of the columns along the y-axis. Now, the reason I did that is to duplicate these nodes for the foundation or for the footing level. Since I'm at 3.5 positive y, I need to duplicate this or to repeat this at negative 5.5. That is a 3.5 to reach the ground level and then additional negative 2 for the foundation level. Then, just connect them again. Now you may want to add some tie beams. Feel free to do so. I'll just skip them through instead. Proceed to aside supports. That's all pinned. I'm assuming you can do this in your own. So, once you do, just add the tie beams once you work on it. Now it looks like the structure geometry is complete. The next command I want to introduce is the create and assign group commands. The former is found under the Tools tab while the latter is under the Geometry tab. And the last command we'll cover for this video is Renumber, which could be found under the Geometry tab. The reason I mentioned them together is because some of you may want to skip this part of the video. I think these commands are useful whenever you will be working with large models. The use of group facilitates certain assignments and specifications command such as property, beta angle, releases, loads, design, and so on. While the renumber command allows you to read output more easily by assigning numbers into specific renumbering system, which could be read as their addresses. For example, I will assign the number series 201 to all the beams in the second floor. It seems it didn't work. It's because probably the 200 series is, is already taken up by other members. So what I'm going to do is to renumber them all together so as to free up the 200 series. Let's say.
now see that all my teams or my members within this level are numbered in 200 series now we could do this again for the third fourth and so on this would enable me to determine later on which level I'm dealing with especially in reading the output or the results the group command may also serve the same purpose and this is how you, de you define groups under tools you just click create new group and then whichever entity or type you're working at say beam so I'll just say beams or second level primary beams I'll just create a new one separating X and Z directions 2P I did not go through all the way in renumbering and grouping since I would just like to show you how they are done. I'm expecting that you will be able to do this on your own. The important thing is you get the idea. Now you know how to build a simple model instead. In the next video, we will define the member properties and materials together with loads and combination. So stick around and I hope to see you again. If you enjoyed this video, please drop some likes and comments. Don't forget to subscribe to stay tuned. Cheers! Thank you.